In the last video, we defined our random variable x as the number of heads we get after flipping a coin five times, and it's a, fi it's a fair coin. And then we figured out the different probabilities that the random variable could take on different values. Let me rewrite them all here. The probability that we get exactly one head, or zero heads, actually, let's start there. The probability we get zero heads, and that's the same thing as getting five tails, we figured out was one out of 32. The probability of getting one head, we figured out, was 5 over 32. The probability of getting two heads, probability that our random variable is equal to 2, what was that? I think it was 10 over 32. Yeah, it was 10 over 32, or 5 over 16. 10 over 32, which is equal to 5 over 16. The probability that we get three heads, that was actually equal to the same thing. 10 over 32 is equal to 5 over 16. And that made sense, because the probability of getting three heads is the same thing as the probability of getting two tails. And the probability of getting two tails should really be the same thing as getting the probability of getting two heads. And then finally, or almost finally, the probability that we get four heads, that was equal to 5 over 32 which also makes sense, because the probability of getting four heads is the same thing as the probability of getting one tail, right? Or, and one tail should be the same thing as one head. So that's why these numbers are the same. And then finally, the probability that we get all five heads, which is the same thing as getting no tails, is 1 over 32. right? The probability of no tails is the same thing as the probability as no heads. So let's draw this. Let's draw our, our probability distribution. OK, let me draw the x-axis. That's not thick enough. Let me draw it. Do it a different color. All right, and just let me draw y-axis. Almost there. All right, so what are the different, what are the different values that we care about for our random variable. And notice these are all discrete values. They're all particular finite numbers that we, we care that our, our, um, our random variable can take on. And that was actually a function of our definition of the random variable, right? This random variable, number of heads after five flips, you can't have an infinite number of values here. Your value can either be 0 through 5, right? And it can't be a, a, a non-integer even. But the important thing to realize is that there's a, disc there's a finite number of values that this random variable can take on. And that's why we have a discrete probability distribution. All right, so the probability that it takes on, let me just draw it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And this is our, for our random variable x. So this is the number of heads in five trials. And let me draw the high points first. So the first one, let's see, the, the high points are, oh, they're all right there. Let's see, five, 10, 30 seconds. That's the probability of 2 and 3, and they're the same. Let me draw a little bar graph. So 2 and 3, let's just say that this is 10, 30 seconds right there. I'll draw them the highest, because those are the highest values. 2 and 3 both hit 10, 30 seconds. Actually, let me draw it a little differently. Let me make it so they touch each other. So let's say 2 is there. And then let me draw 3. And 3 is also there. Uh, there you go. All right, what's the probability that you get 1? That was 5, 30 seconds, so that's half of these. These two should be the same height, so that's 5, 30 seconds. Should be like that. And that's the same thing as getting 4 heads, so that's like that. Let's assume that this 4 is down here. And then the probability of getting either 0 or 5 is the same thing. That's 1, so that's 1. It's going to be 1 fifth of this height, so it's going to be look something like that. It's going to look like something like that. And let's say this last one is for 5. Nope. The drawing is the hardest part. Uh, it's going to look something like that. All right. And so this is for 5, and this is for 4 right here. And this right here is 10 30 seconds, or 5 16 10 30 seconds. This is 5 30 seconds. And this right here is 1 30 second. What I have just drawn is a binomial probability distribution. 
or it's a, a per, not the it's a particular instance of the binomial probability distribution and actually as you get to kind of an infinite number of values and once we get to the continuous this will approach the famous bell curve that you hear about where things actually start looking like a bell where it'll start looking like that and we'll do some maybe I'll get excel out and I'll I'll do it where I I start saying instead of saying you know the number of heads after in 5 trials if I did this as you know the number of heads in 5 million trials you'd start these these bars would get very very close together and you'd start seeing them approach this thing that looks like a bell curve and this is a it's a very important distribution one because it actually describes a lot of random processes but it's actually very important statistics in generally because a lot of times in statistics you don't know the underlying mechanism that's generating your results and you just assume that there's just a bunch of random stuff going on and they just all kind of you just add up a bunch of random events and when you're adding up random events that's like counting the number of heads and then you end up and you so you assume that a lot of things have a a, well, in the discrete case, a binomial distribution, and in, in, in a few videos from now, I'll show you the continuous case, which is the normal distribution. And that's imp this, this is really important to realize, because sometimes people make that assumption about certain things, and the biggest one, and this has probably the, the most negative repercussions, especially in this type of financial environment, well, they'll assume that some process has a binomial or a normal distribution where it really doesn't. Right, because if you assume that something has a distribution like this, you start saying, "Oh, well, the probabilities at, at these ends are really low." But what if the distribution is, you know, something like this? And I'll do more work on this. I don't want to get too advanced too fast. But the general idea: it's really an important to understand the assumption you're making when someone says, "Oh, we assume it's a normal distribution. We assume it's a binomial distribution." But with that said, I'll just—that's a little bit of a of a nugget of why this is important going into the future. But just to kind of review a little more what we've already studied. Let's think about this. Why is this called the binomial distribution? Well, if you think about it, the probable when when you flip when you flipped five coins or when you had five flips of the same coin, each arrangement, you know, I'll pick an arbitrary arrangement of heads and tails, you know. Each circumstance of heads and tails, I guess I could call it, you know, that's one of them, five flips. Each of these have exactly a 132 one in 32 probability. In fact, there's exactly 32 ways I can draw some combination of heads and tails here, right? So each of those have a 1 in 32 probability. And what we essentially did what in the last video when we said, okay, what was the probability of getting exactly two heads? We essentially said, okay, how many of these circumstances or how many of these, I guess we could call it, how many of these permutations, how many of these permutations had two heads? And we counted them up, and we got, oh, we said 10 of them have two heads. And that's why the probability was 10 out of 32. And the way we figure that out is, for example, if we said two heads, we said, OK, the one, of the, one of five flips could be the first head, and then one of four flips could be the second head. And then we don't care about order. So we don't care if you know flip one was the first head and flip two was the second head, or it's the other way around. So we divide by two. And we said that this was the same thing as five factorial. Actually, let me do it color coded. This part is the same thing as 5 factorial over 3 factorial. And then 2, that's actually the same thing as 2 factorial, because 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Right? So in general, in general, let me write this down. The probability that x equaled n, and this is for the x that I defined, the random variable, the number of heads I get in 5 flips of the coin. It was equal to it was equal to five factorial five factorial divided by n factorial, right? In this case it was two. Two was n, we said it was a probability that we get exactly two heads, times five minus two factorial. Right? And if you and I, I encourage you to review because it, it really is important to get an intuitive feel of this. I encourage you to review the uh, videos I made in the probability playlist on binomial coefficients and on um, you know this this flipping of coins type of probability problems because I I go a little more detail in the actual intuition of this. But if you watch those or if you have a little bit of experience with this, you would recognize that this is the binomial coefficient. 
And I, and I actually even have a video why it's called a binomial, because these coefficients show up when you actually multiply binomials. Binomials are just things like, you know, if I just have x plus y and I start multiplying it by itself, take it to different powers, the, the coefficients of these tend to be, well, they are the same as these. And I give you a whole video on, on why, that, well, that's why that works. And so this is why it's even called the binomial coefficient and why this is called the binomial distribution. But another way of writing this, a shorthand, is 5 choose n. And they say that because what were we doing? We, had, we said we had five flips, and we were choosing two of the flips to be heads. Or in this case, we have five flips, and we're choosing n of the flips to be heads. So this will tell you how many of the different permutations satisfy our condition. And then we say, well, what's the probability of each of those? It's times 1 out of 32. So this is why it's called the binomial distribution. Each of the each of the values, the probabilities for each of the random variable values, there you can you can figure them out by using your your binomial coefficients. Anyway, I just realized I'm out of time again, and don't worry, I'm going to do a couple more examples with this because I really want you to get the hang of the binomial distribution before we move into the normal distribution. See you soon.